The Hague, embarrassed by its failure to prevent Europe's worst atrocities since World War II, the United Nations Security Council created a tribunal in 1993 to track down and punish those responsible for the horrific violence against civilians that convulsed the Balkans during the breakup of Yugoslavia. Over its 24-year life, the tribunal indicted 161 people, heard from nearly 5,000 witnesses, and met for 10,800 days. It convicted people from all parties to the conflict on war crimes and crimes against humanity, though the largest number were Serbs. Six Bosnian Serbs, including the political leader Radovan Karadzic and the military commander Ratko Mladic, were convicted of genocide and sentenced to lengthy prison terms. Its pioneering work, televised from the court, introduced a new vocabulary into the public realm. Terms like ethnic cleansing and mass rape as a weapon to destroy lives, notions once confined to experts, are now widely used. As the tribunal expanded the body of international law that had lain mostly dormant since the trials at Nuremberg and Tokyo after World War II, it spawned an avalanche of scholarship. Other courts followed it, dealing with Rwanda, Sierra Leone, Cambodia, and Lebanon. Many believe the tribunal provided the momentum for the founding of the permanent International Criminal Court. But at a closing ceremony this past week for the court, known as the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, the mood was sober. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said that accountability has taken root in our collective consciousness. But international criminal justice, he said, was still a long-term undertaking. Speaking in the medieval Knights Hall in the presence of the Dutch King, Willem Alexander, Serge Bram Mertz, the tribunal's chief prosecutor, said, it seems as if today, there are more conflicts than in recent history. He added, the need for justice is immense, but so are the political barriers. The ceremony had the tinge of a memorial service, as fragments from witnesses' testimonies were displayed on a giant screen and an actress read out heartbreaking accounts from victims of atrocities. Some in the audience were moved to tears. The tribunal first captured the world's attention late one night in 2001, when a helicopter dropped the man who until then was Serbia's president into the courtyard of the United Nations jail near The Hague. Slobodan Milosevic became the first former head of state to appear before a modern international war crimes court. He died in prison of a heart attack in 2006, two months before his trial was due to end. Prosecutors were blamed for having been overly ambitious, bringing 66 charges covering three wars in Croatia, Bosnia and Kosovo which they said he had instigated. The trial of Mr. Milosevic, though, revealed government archives and evidence that contributed to a different public mindset. When I was in law school, it was normal for dictators to retire in the south of France, said Diane Orant Liker, a law professor at Washington's American University. All my students have grown up in a world where it's normal to think a mastermind of atrocities must be brought to book.